Hey my friend, welcome back! So a few weeks ago, I made a video titled 7 Steps to Cure the Gear Acquisition Syndrome and that sparked a lot of conversations in the comment section, which is awesome. And one argument that I kept seeing is that gear acquisition syndrome can be good for you to find out what you like and what you don't like. So it's kind of a, a phase that you have to go through to know which kinds of pedals that you like and which kind of gear is good for you. And that at the end, there's like a, a sort of rite of passage and you finally know what you like and you can finally be content with the gear you have. And I want to discuss this argument in this follow-up video today because I think that it's still missing the point. There's a big difference between straight up gear acquisition and gear acquisition syndrome. That's the syndrome part of it that we want to get rid of, not the gear acquisition. Because as musicians, it's normal that we need to buy stuff at a certain point. It's normal that we need to purchase instruments and pedals and stuff like this, right? Unless you are singing a cappella or you are playing body percussion <laughs> or something like this, I don't know. You need to buy stuff. So the gear acquisition uh, portion of it is not bad. It's the syndrome portion. It's the addiction that results from it. It's like saying that you have to become an alcoholic for some period of time to know which alcohols you like to drink. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? But that's kind of the same thing when I hear that you have to go through gas to find out what you like. When the passion for music is replaced with a passion for gear, that's when it is a problem. If both can coexist together, you don't really have a case of gas here. So in the last video, I said that I had the gear acquisition syndrome six years ago and I found a way to cure it. But when I'm thinking about it, I did not really have gas. I was still playing a lot. Uh, I was in the middle of uh, finishing my bachelor's degree in music education. So I was practicing one to two hours a day. I was making music on a weekly basis for my YouTube channel. So I was still productive and creative with my music, even if I was researching a lot of gear demo videos and stuff like this and going a lot on the used market to see what were the pedals, right? So in that case, I had both at the same time. It did not prevent me from making music, from practicing, from playing. So the real problem is that when it prevents you from playing, from enjoying, and it saps your, your passion for music, and the, the word replaced is really important here. It's when the passion for music is replaced with a passion for gear. So now the, the next logical question is how to get rid of the syndrome portion of it. Because in my last video, the seven steps, it's more drastic, right? It's the problem at the source. It, and it's more eliminating stuff like delete your account on gear forums, delete your shortcuts and apps to Reverb and eBay, uh, unsubscribe from gear demo channels. And if you do all of that, that's going to reduce, you're going to reduce the exposition to the things that made you crave for pedals and that feeded your gear acquisition syndrome. But it's not necessarily getting rid of the syndrome portion of it. You can still want gear even if you reduce being exposed to things that make you want gear. So I'm going to give you four additional tips to get rid of the syndrome portion of it. Tip number one is make music with every single piece of gear that you own. So just look around in your studio and list everything that you have. So if I look around in my case, I see a slide that I don't use a lot. I see a Ebo that I'm barely using. I see a capo, a 12 string guitar, a Fender precision bass, uh, a preamp. I have many, many things lying around in the studio that are just 
collecting dust because I'm not using them. So I could say, I'm gonna make a song with my slide guitar, I'm gonna make a song with my ebo, I'm gonna make a song with my capo, I'm gonna use my tambourine, my shaker, I don't know, do something with every single piece of gear that you have. You have a lot of work ahead of you if you do that. There was one uh, person in the comment section who said, I have my own rule that each time that I buy a new pedal, I have to make a song with it, which is really, really great. And I would say, make even more than one song because if you make one song per pedal you can still be buying a lot of pedals so try to make music with what you already have lying around in the studio tip number two go to a real music store and try the gear for yourself so the part of the argument that says that you need to find out what you like and what you don't like is true, but you don't need to create a syndrome out of that to know it. Just go in person and try out everything that you can in the store to find out what you like and what you don't like. And of course, your local music store might not have all the latest coolest, most expensive boutique guitar pedals that are sought after, but who cares? You might not need all of that stuff. There are a lot of boutique pedals that are going in some general music stores nowadays, so I can find in my case Strymon pedals in any store in Montreal here, but even if they don't have it, I'm sure that you can find something that you like. You do not need to purchase the pedal online or on, on Amazon and get the pedal directly to your house and try it to know if you like it or not. Just go in person, don't waste your money on things that you will not end up liking and uh, you will have much better results and it's gonna be a much faster to reach the point where you know what you like and what you don't like. Tip number three, embrace boredom. And it's not even about music anymore. That's a concept that I read in the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. Because we are in an era where we are always looking for that rush of dopamine by looking at our phones, by going on social media, by consuming quick content again and again. Give me that dopamine. And that's kind of what you get when you click on the buy button online for a new pedal. And when you are unboxing the pedal and playing with it for the first five minutes until it just fades and you are looking for that rush once again with a new purchase. So you have to train your brain into embracing boredom. At any occasion, try to just do nothing. If you are waiting in line, do not look at your phone. Just look around and listen to your environment and do nothing. Be comfortable with your own thoughts. That is becoming rare. Sometimes I am in my living room and I'm just staring at the wall and my girlfriend just laughs at me and she says, oh, you're still trying to embrace boredom once again. And I say, exactly. <laughs> That's what I try to do, right? Just to train myself to not be looking for that rush of dopamine, that instant gratification we are looking again and again and again. And finally, tip number four, schedule your practice time and turn off internet. When I was 15, it was really easy to just spontaneously sit down and practice for two or three hours because I really wanted to master that sweep picking phrase or whatever that was, and that would just happen just like this. But as we get older, it's a lot harder to get those spontaneous moments. We have to engineer those moments. So you have to schedule your practice time. And it's really important because if you want to become a good musician, it's important to have those uninterrupted, concentrated practice sessions because around with all the instant gratification and dopamine rushes, we cannot become great musicians. I'm sure that the best guitar players in the world right now are still practicing a lot to maintain their dexterity, to maintain the high level of skill that they have attained over the years. So if you're looking for something to practice, you could click on the first link in the description box 
enroll in my free mini course on ambient guitar chords, watch a video or two to get the concepts, and then download the chord charts and the, the exercises and practice offline. You could print them if you want, you could put them on your iPad and then turn off internet and just sit down, be concentrated, uninterrupted, and practice the chord uh, sequences that I show you in my exercises to get better at guitar that is super, super important. So I guess that's my answer to it. You do not need to go through the gear acquisition syndrome to find out what you like and what you don't like. You don't need to have a some kind of syndrome or addiction to uh, become a better musician and find out what you like. So let me know in the comments below, which of the four tips are you going to implement this week? Are you gonna make music with every single piece of gear that you own? Are you going to go to a real music store now to, to try your pedals and your gear? Are you going to try like me to embrace boredom at some moments in your day to train your brain that it's okay to do not have this rush of dopamine at all times? And or are you going to schedule your practice time offline by getting my free course below. It's my pleasure to offer it to you. And of course, if you disagree with me, you can respectfully uh, say what you think in the comment section below and uh, keep the conversation going. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, au revoir.